प्रतिमा एंड वेलकम बैक टू हिमाटोलॉजी प्रैक्टिकल सीरीज टुडे वी शेल स्टडी हाउ टू डिटरमाइन डब्ल्यू बी सी काउंट यूजिंग हिमोसाइटोमीटर इट्स ऑल्सो नोन एज टोटल ल्यूकोसाइट काउंट दैट इज टी एल सी आई शेल ऑल्सो डिस्कस कॉमन मिस्टेक्स स्टूडेंट्स कमिट ड्यूरिंग दिस प्रोसीजर एंड हाउ टू अवॉइड दैम बिफोर वी स्टार्ट काइंडली पॉज द वीडियो एंड थिंक What's the purpose of determining WBC count? Why is it important to know this value? Once you are ready, resume. As you might have guessed, leukocytes play important role in defense against pathogens. Hence, TLC is an essential tool in medical practice for diagnosing, monitoring and managing wide range of diseases and conditions affecting the immune system. For example, Increased TLC is indicative of infections, inflammation or certain malignancies whereas decreased TLC suggests immune suppression, bone marrow disorders or certain infections like dengue or HIV. So with this background, let's dive into the practical part. Aim of this practical is to enumerate number of white blood cells in 1 cubic millimeter that is 1 microliter of blood sample. As we have seen in previous video on RBC count same principle of hemocytometry is also applied for WBC count So first WBCs are counted in a known volume of diluted blood typically WBCs are counted in 4 by 10 cubic millimeter volume and the blood is diluted 20 times then the WBCs in 1 cubic millimeter of undiluted blood are calculated by multiplying with appropriate volume factor and dilution factor to perform wbc count we need hemocytometer which includes neubus chamber a cover slip and wbc pipette then wbc diluting fluid a watch glass lancet cotton spirit and microscope to dilute the blood sample here we are using WBC diluting fluid which is also known as Turx fluid it contains glacial acidic acid which lyses RBCs and ensures that only WBCs are visible for counting here is a thought question for you we don't lyse WBCs while counting RBCs so why is it essential to lyse RBCs while counting WBCs write your answers in the comment section below Next component of Turks fluid is gentian violet. It stains the nuclei of WBCs for better visualization under the microscope. And the last component is distilled water which acts as solvent. As you might have noticed, this solution is hypotonic which also aids hemolysis. Now coming to the procedure. Before taking finger prick, ensure that the chamber cover slip and pipette are dry and clean it is absolutely essential that all the instruments including the microscope are clean and dust free otherwise dust particles can interfere with wbc counting and result in false elevated count also check for the potency of the pipette by blowing through it if you feel an air current on the back of your hand the pipette is patent now focus the wbc square under the low power that is 10x objective and confirm that it is clean then remove it without disturbing any settings of the microscope this saves your time when you are ready with the sample for quick focusing refer to my earlier video and you will find the link in the description now take adequate wbc diluting fluid in a watch glass This is an essential step before taking the finger prick which can prevent your blood from clotting within the pipette. Once this background preparation is done, you are ready to collect the blood sample. For this, take a bold finger prick by following all the aseptic precautions. Wipe away the first drop with dry cotton and allow an adequate size drop to form on the fingertip. Now place the tip of the pipette within the drop and gently draw the blood exactly up to 0.5 mark without any air bubbles in WBC pipette. Note that 
0.5 mark is the line below the number. Then wipe the tip of the pipette to remove any excess blood and then immerse it into the dilating fluid and draw it up to 11 mark. Mix the contents thoroughly by holding the pipette horizontally between the palm and rotating it. Wait for 2-3 to three minutes for completion of hemolysis and staining of the WBC nuclei. So this completes your preparation of blood sample and you are ready to perform cell count. So let's see how to charge the chamber. Place a clean cover slip over the nubus chamber. It should cover both the counting surfaces and the side gutters. Discard the first two drops from the pipette and then allow a small drop to form. Touch this drop to the chamber's edge near the cover slip. It will immediately sweep under the cover slip by the capillary action. Wait for a minute for cells to settle. Now place the chamber on the microscope stage without changing any settings. Since it is already focused under 10x, you will just need some fine adjustment to visualize WBCs. They appear like tiny black dots. At this point, make sure that the condenser is at the lowest position and diaphragm is slightly open. This allows easy visualization of the cells. If the light is too bright, you may not visualize any WBCs. Ok, now begin the cell counting in any one WBC square on hemocytometer. Note that each WBC square is subdivided into 16 smaller squares. Start with top left small square. Count all the cells in this square. Then observe the borders of the square for any cells and apply inverted L rule for the cells on the borders. It means include the cells on the top and the left borders in your count and write the total in the first box of your observation note. Exclude the cells on the right and the bottom borders. In this case, there are 4 cells within the box and 1 on the top border. So, the cell count for the first box is 5. Now proceed to the next square. As it has no WBCs, record the count as 0. In the third square, you can clearly note one WBC and you will also find similar black color dots. So, use the fine adjustment knob to distinguish WBCs from dust particles. The presence of blue or violet coloration inside the cell or a halo around the nucleus confirms WBCs. So, exclude black dots or particles without these features as they are likely to be dust particles. Apply this method to count WBCs in all the squares. Consistently differentiate WBCs from dust particles if any by using fine adjustment and color characteristics. After recording all the cells in this WBC squares, that means all the cells in the 16 small squares, move to the next corner WBC square and count the cells in it. Repeat the process for remaining two WBC squares. Thus, we count the cells in 4 corner WBC squares, that means 64 small WBC squares. Now coming to the calculation part. Record the cell counts for each WBC square as N1, N2, N3 and N4. Ideally, the difference between maximum and minimum counts should be less than 20. If the difference exceeds this value, recharge the chamber and repeat the counting process. Otherwise, proceed with the calculation. So, let's see the steps in calculation. First, add these 4 counts to get the total number of WBCs in 4 corner squares and let's denote it as N. Now, you know the dimension of WBC square. It is 1 mm by 1 mm. So, area of 1 corner WBC square is 1 mm square and the volume is 1 by 10 cubic millimeter. To learn the details about these dimensions of the squares, refer to my video on Nubus Chamber. Now since we have counted WBCs in such 4 squares, 
the volume of four squares becomes 1 by 10 into 4 that is 4 by 10 cubic millimeter. It means you have counted n number of cells in 4 by 10 cubic millimeter volume. To get the count in 1 cubic millimeter, multiply cell count by 10 by 4. Thus, 10 by 4 is our volume factor. Alternatively, you can derive the volume factor by considering the volume of 64 small WBC squares. It will be the same. Ok, now this is your WBC count in diluted sample. To get the count in undiluted sample, multiply by dilution factor which is 20. Because you have taken blood up to 0.5 and diluted till 11, dilution factor is 20. So the final step of calculation is n into 10 by 4 that is the volume factor into 20 which is the dilution factor giving you the simplified version as n into 50. This is the WBC count in undiluted blood. Normal WBC count ranges between 4000 to 11000 per cubic millimeter. So compare your result with this normal range and conclude or draw inference whether your count is within the normal range, less than normal or more than normal. Now this completes your procedure for WBC count. Now let's see key precautions to follow. Very first and important precaution is to ensure that all the apparatus including microscope lenses are clean and dry. Many students don't pay attention to this part and waste their time later in cleaning the things. Then keep the diluting fluid ready before pricking the finger. Wipe off the first drop of blood as it also contains tissue fluid and can give you false low cell count. Collect the blood sample exactly up to 0.5 mark without any air bubbles. To learn more why bubbles enter and how to avoid them, watch my video on RBC count. You will find the link in the description box below. Blood sample must be diluted immediately by using Turx fluid up to the mark 11. Before charging the chamber, discard initial two drops from the pipette because it mostly contains diluting fluid. Discarding them ensures an accurate sample in the chamber. Avoid overcharging or undercharging and do not blow through the pipette while charging. Blowing can lead to overcharging the chamber. So allow the fluid to move under the cover slip naturally. And coming to the last precaution, follow inverted L rule for counting the cells on the borders. This prevents recounting and ensures each cell is counted just once. These are some common viva questions that are usually asked during the exam on this topic. So be ready with your answers and best wishes. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Are you new to my channel? Then please subscribe it and press the bell icon to stay updated about the new releases. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for joining in and see you in the next video.